today that you are the fairest of the fair Jesus. you are the lily of the valley the bright and morning star and your love is written deep within our hearts Amen. and we cannot be separated from your love we thank you Lord that you are living in us we thank you Lord for the truth and the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom and we thank you today for all that you have done and we acknowledge you today as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege to come together. Thank you for the joy it is to worship you. And help us, Holy Spirit, to worship with everything that we have, not with lips, but with our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our God is so mighty, glory, so beautiful. Gently lift me when I am surrounded. 
nothing compares to you, God. Nothing in this world compares to your glory, to your majesty, oh God. We want to be fine, singing and praising and shouting the praises of our God. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised is he. and you set my feet upon the rock. You've given me something to sing about. You've given me a reason to rejoice. In the midst of the trials, in the midst of the storm, let us be fine praising the Lord our God. Oh, that man would praise the Lord. Oh, that man would praise the Lord. For the heavens declare his glory and his majesty is for all to see and he shall be oh every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords hallelujah I'm dancing
just going to turn to the word first today before coming to the table of the Lord. I want to turn to Luke chapter 8. Chapter 8 and verse 43. Which can't be right because that's there is no verse 43. <laughs> there is. There is. 
Who is there? Uh -huh. I am in the wrong book completely. Excuse me. Dear, dear, dear. We're just singing about it. Mm -hmm. The woman who touched the hem of his garment. It's a familiar story, but let's, let's read it through again. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody that hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, Be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that opens our understanding. And as we look at this scripture today, may you give us revelation and truth. In the name of Jesus, that our eyes will be opened, that we would see what this woman saw. In Jesus' mighty name we ask it. Amen and amen. I'm sure you've heard many, many teachings and many different aspects of this story. But the way I want to look at was Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? And then the title of this message is, what is your point of contact? Jesus was this woman's point of contact. We know that she heard about Jesus. Now, I briefly want to talk about we, we, if we remember in the beginning when God created Adam he came and he had fellowship with Adam and Adam with God and that was lost and God longed for that fellowship but that separation was made through the sin through the fall and every, every man and every woman was born in that iniquity and sin separated from Father God but you know, as we read through the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, which is an example for us, which is a, a picture and a shadow of that which was to come, we see that God desired a people. He desired to dwell among a people. But he was a holy God, and the people were unclean. So we read many times about the Holy of Holies and, and about how even the priests had to be sanctified it had to be clean they couldn't just go into the holy of holies just whenever they wanted and however they wanted god there was a way because the presence the glory of god was a dangerous thing to sinful man but then the fulfillment of the old covenant jesus came to fulfill he came to fulfill it he came as the son of god the word became flesh. People could touch Jesus and they would live. Do you remember before they couldn't even touch the Ark of the Covenant? They would have died. But they could touch the very Son of God and live. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, But he made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus laid aside his majesty. He laid aside his glory like someone would take a garment off 
and he took off the glory that he was robed in the glory of God the presence of the Holy God and he put on the rags of our humanness the Amplified puts it this way but he emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity but only temporary giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bond servant and being made in the likeness of men he complete he became completely human but was without sin being fully God and fully man and that is a great mystery of the gospel a great mystery that we can never comprehend what that really means with our own understanding only by faith but faith is a mighty force amen we know there was no other way that we could have fellowship with the father Jesus himself said no man can come unto the father but by me I am the truth the way and the life and this is, the, this is this man called Jesus who was walking about among the people and some couldn't recognize him. Some did, some didn't. What a mighty picture of the grace of God that the gospel is made available to every man whether they receive it, recognize it or not. How great is the love of our God. Jesus was the only begotten Son of God. Begotten means fathered. The, the legitimate Son. We are sons through adoption, but Jesus was the legitimate Son of God. It was the seed of God and Jesus the Word became flesh in order to redeem us to take our place on the cross Jesus the Word who was with God and who was God in the beginning became flesh he lowered himself he became the perfect Lamb of God the perfect sacrifice for our sin we could not go up we could never rise enough to reach our God, but he came down to us. What a beautiful picture. Do you know the love of God is not just amazing, it's supernatural, isn't it? But while he was on this earth, he was a connection between heaven and earth. He was the connection between a holy God and an unholy people. And while others were thronging Jesus, there was, it says earlier in that chapter, there was a great multitude and they were all following after Jesus. He was on his way to do a mighty miracle and they were following after him to see what would happen. And you can imagine in a great multitude, the noise and the, the, you know what, I don't like crowds. So I can imagine what it's like people pressing up against and bumping into against I was like keep your distance you know <laughs> social distance <laughs> it's not a new thing for a lot of people but this woman touched Jesus she made a holy connection and that power of God that virtue flew flowed out through Jesus because he said it himself I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. What is virtue? Virtue is the power, the power of God. He's the fountain of life. And that, that fountain of life was available for everyone. But this woman touched and she received. It says when she heard about Jesus, we know that the Bible teaches us that faith comes by hearing. I think it's in Romans. Faith comes by hearing, but hearing what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. What is the word of God? Who is the word of God? 
Jesus. Do you know, we can hear all of the religious things and all of the doctrines and everything and faith will not come. Only by hearing who Jesus is and only by knowing who Jesus is and hearing what he has done, who he is, that he didn't just die on the cross, but he is resurrected and he is glorified and he is making intercession for us. When we begin to hear about these things, faith comes. There's a connection. This woman had tried everything. It says she had spent all that she had. She had lost everything, but yet grew worse. That's hopelessness. There was nobody left to help her. That was helplessness. And because of this issue of blood, she was classed on clean. So she was an outcast. So she had loneliness. It sums it really up, doesn't it? What sin does in our lives. There's that saying that sin will stay longer than you ever thought. It would cost you more than you had planned. And it has a way of bringing us into hopelessness, helplessness and loneliness. But she heard the first, the first thing in every miracle is when we hear about the miracle worker. When we, every healing begins when we hear hear about the healer amen and she heard so what did she hear she heard the very same things that we read she heard about this man who was in the synagogues and he and that says that he the people marvel because he read the scriptures but there was something about how this man talked and he didn't talk like the pharisees and the scribes it says he talks he speaks as one with authority. So she would have heard that. They would have told her about this man called Jesus. And he speaks with one, as one with authority. She would have heard of the, the, the miracles that he did. And we are told that the people came and, and they that came to him, he healed them all. Can you imagine what that did for that woman when she heard all who come to Jesus are healed he doesn't turn anyone away and she grabbed a hold of what she was hearing and she cried within herself I believe it Lord I believe it you're not just a man from from Nazareth you're not just a normal man you're the Messiah you're the one I'm looking for you're the physician I need so first of all she heard but then that faith that came with what she heard, began to work within her. That word was working and working because she could have sat there and heard all this about Jesus and th cried out to God and saying, oh, that Jesus would come to my house, that Jesus would come this way because I'm so weak, I can't leave the house. I'm an outcast. I'm on cling. I can't go to him. But faith was working that word was working and she was saying i believe it i believe it and if i could just touch the hem of his garment i know that i will be made whole you see this woman wasn't just looking for a healing she was looking for life it, this miracle was much more to her and can you imagine how hard it was and it would be virtually impossible in the natural for the, a woman in this state. She had been hemorrhaging for 12 years, so weak that she would have been so ill and so weak, so um, helpless, as I said. But something gave her the strength. And that was the word that she heard. And the faith that came from that word. It was a power and a strength that quickened her. And she got a hold of it and she wasn't going to let go. 
and she pressed in through that crowd. This little weak woman. And people are trying to receive from God today. They're waiting for someone to come and pray for them. They're waiting for someone with the gift of miracles, the gift of healing. And they're, they're, if, if there was someone to come to a town, people would run. There used to be, you know, there, were, there are still men of God with the, with the gift of healing. And people just, you know, they go looking for a healing. But you could get a healing today and need another healing next week. Are you going to run to somebody else? But God says, no, I have made a way. I have made a, I have given you a point of contact. And that word, that living word is our point of contact. In order to, in order to connect with God, we need to first receive and hear about Jesus. Hear about that word. We need to hear it and hear it, and hear it, and let it work. And as we hear it, that word, that faith, that power of that word is flowing, and we become one with it. We become one with it. That's why it's so important. We are responsible for what we listen to in our natural ears. And what we listen to will be affecting. And what our spiritual ears, it talks about being, incline thine ears onto my word hide my word in your heart amen this woman tapped into the fountain of life and I asked you again what is your point of contact are you waiting for someone to come along crying to God to heal you when all the time God has sent his word. It says in the old covenant that he sent his word and healed them. Imagine trying to plug a lamp or a TV or something into a plug and no electric in that wall. Make sure you're plugged into the right place. That, that the, the electricity coming into that, that plug to make that connection has to be live. It has to be there or there's no connection. And religion is dead. And we can plug into the doctrines and uh, religious teachings all day long and it will not give us life. But when we plug in, when we connect with the word of God and we allow that word to come and to do that work and work mightily in us then that faith comes that faith comes in 2 Timothy chapter 2 it says who wants this is God who wants everyone to be saved but it doesn't stop there it says, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all. For all. Amen. Isn't that so precious? Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24 says, Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word. You see, we couldn't come before a holy God and stand because we would, what would be written over us was guilty. Guilty. But when the blood is applied, when we have faith in Jesus Christ, that mediator, that man called Jesus and his perfect sacrifice and that blood covers us, that blood washes us and cleans us. 
cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And where it once said guilty, now it says forgiven. Accept it. What you connect with, you become one with. When we hear about Jesus and that faith begins to, to spark within us, like, like electricity, like, it's, the same, it's the same kind of concept because it's flowing from the word. It's flowing from the word and we either resist it or we yield to it. But when faith that comes to us, it's generated by and through the faith of God so that we can stand Connect it with the living God. We can be connected with other things. Influenced by other things like fear. And that fear brings torment. How we know the difference between the conviction of the Holy Spirit and the condemnation of the enemy is what it produces. What does it generate in our heart? When the enemy comes and it's the condemnation and he's pointing his finger and he's accusing us, it will be like death to our soul. Because it will, it just, he's just pointing out the fault. You're no good. You're not worthy. You've done this. You've done that. But that's it. That's where it ends. But the conviction of the Holy Spirit is generates life. Because when the Holy Spirit puts his finger in something in our life and says, this is not right. He gives us the grace and he gives us the strength to yield to him, to repent, turn away from it and put it right. We don't do it in our own strength. We don't work out our own salvation in our own strength, but we're working out our own salvation as we're allowing the word of God to work in us. And it's by faith, it's by grace we are saved through faith. Amen. So God's word is life, it's creative. It is life itself. So if the word itself is life, then what is the faith that comes from the word? It also has to be life. We talk flippantly about our faith. But it all stems from the word of God. It's not true faith if it's not coming from the word. If it's only positive thinking, trying to be positive, speak the right things, that's not faith. But the faith that gives life is the faith that is coming from the word of God that says by his stripes you were healed. That by the blood of the lamb you are redeemed. That's where the faith comes. Then when we make that connection to the word of God, we've got to stay connected. Like that woman pressing through she pressed through. I don't know how many. It says a great multitude. She could have, like, we're coming to, to, to God on a personal level. But there's so much other things around us that we have to press through. The lies and the, the, the problems, the storm itself or whatever it may be. But we've got to stay connected. But as we stay connected, that faith will grow. That faith will continue. That strength will increase. Romans 10 and verse 8, but it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. This is important. We often hear people say, The word is nigh me, even in my mouth. But it says, and in thy heart. And it's not finished. It says, that is the word of faith which we preach. What did they preach? They preached Jesus. Crucified, resurrected, 
and glorified. And when we're talking about that, that faith, we will be staying connected to the life, the strength, the power of God, the fountain of life. But it's not finished there. It goes on in verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's so important. The Amplified says to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. That is, recognize, rest in, to know more about him. They're satisfied with knowing that they've been saved. But it says here that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And what that means you're recognizing his power, his authority, and his majesty as God. He wasn't just a man. He's not just the son of God. He is God the son. And then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Everything hangs on that resurrection power. For someone to believe that Jesus died for them for their sins so that they could go to heaven is not the truth. But he died and rose again. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's what gives us life. That's what gives us the, the, the uh, strength to go through this life. Because we know where we're going. We know what's ahead of us, and it's glorious, and it's mighty. And when we get there, we will say, it was worth it all. When we see Jesus face to face. And that's what it's all about. That's what it means. And this woman touched Jesus by faith. She didn't just touch him with his hand. And many could say today, oh, if he was here, if he would just come and I could touch him. Well, that wouldn't do any good because there was many touching him and they weren't healed. But this woman touched him by faith. And we can touch him by faith today. We can receive our miracle today by hearing that word and believing it. And allowing that word to bring faith and strength and hope and life. And we can touch, we can make that spiritual connection. And Jesus said to this woman, go in peace. It wasn't just a, a nice feeling that left. This woman was made whole. She was given life. So we can stay connected. By knowing who Jesus is and knowing that we are in him, believe his word and allow the word to work in you. Every day I pray that scripture that says the, work, the word of God is working mightily in me. His resurrection power is vibrating in every cell of my body because I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I am not my own. I have been bought with a great price, the precious blood of Jesus. And I am redeemed from every curse of the law. I am healed by those stripes. And we're going to come to the table and remember what the Lord has done for us. We're going to remember the price that he paid. But you know it's a celebration today for us. Because we're looking back and we're saying, Lord, you did it all. You paid the price I could never pay. Amen. Amen. Do you believe it? Are you ready to receive? Do you know what it is you need to receive? Some might say, I need a healing. I need a miracle. I need peace in my mind. 
No, my friend, you need to hear about Jesus. You need to acknowledge the A, B, C of the salvation. Admit, acknowledge you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart. And C, confess with your mouth. And I want to pray just now for anyone watching the, 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 this video, wherever it may be. If you have never accepted or acknowledged that you're a sinner and that Jesus Christ is the only way, he is your Savior, your Redeemer, I just want to pray with you now because you can be free and you can join us today in celebration of what Jesus has done. If you believe what I've been saying, that Jesus wasn't just a man, but he was the precious son of God, the, the perfect lamb of God who came and took your place on that cruel cross. And that he's not on the cross, he's not in the tomb, but he has risen again. Then just repeat after me. Father God, I admit that I am a sinner and I need your love and your grace today. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is your son and that he died in my place and that you raised him from the dead and that he lives today. I don't understand it, but I choose to believe it. And I confess now with my might that Jesus is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is my healer. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. The Word of God tells you that anyone who would call upon the name of the Lord, he will not turn them away. Just like this woman who came to touch his clothes. He didn't turn her away. He didn't say, you shouldn't be touching me. But that virtue, that power flowed. And right now you may not feel it, but the word of God is beginning. The prayer doesn't save you, but the word of God is now beginning to work. The Holy Spirit will do a work in your heart. So seek after to hear more about Jesus. But right now we're going to take the bread and the wine, the bread and the juice, which is symbolic of what Jesus has done. And we're going to celebrate today and remember what he has done for us. David, if you could just pass it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's written in Isaiah that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We can make that personal today. It's that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and we take this breath. And we say thank you, Lord, that your body was broken for us, that you took those stripes upon your own back. You bled for us. You died in our place. 
And we say thank you, for there was no other way. But you made that way for us, and Lord, we receive it today. We received the revelation of everything that it was contained in that sacrifice. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you said that no man took your life, but you laid it down willingly, knowing what you would suffer, but for the, the joy that was set before you of those that would receive you, you suffered and you took our place. But because you had the power to lay down your life, you had the power to take it up again. So we remember now the power of that blood that was shed, that we are covered over, that we are a new creation, that we are dead to our past, the guilt of the past, and we are made alive. We are quickened together with Christ Jesus. And we say thank you for the power of the blood. Thank you, Lord, there's nothing can stand against that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word over me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is mighty. Our God is holy. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, the healing flows from your throne. That those rivers of living water are flowing. That we are made new creations in Christ Jesus. And we can rejoice today because our sins are forgiven. We can rejoice today because we have a home in heaven. Hallelujah, we rejoice, oh God, that through every storm, you never leave us, you never forsake us. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, today I pray for those prayer requests, those that are struggling in their physical body today. Lord, I pray that they would remember that you are their healer. And Lord, I loose their eyes to see like that woman and that they would touch you today and receive the healing that belongs to them as the children of god i rebuke the weakness and the torment of inflammation infection weakness and everything else in the name of jesus and i say be healed be healed for jesus christ has made a way. Hallelujah. I pray for the family. Lord, I pray for my family that's that's bereaving today. That's Lord coming to terms with Lord, I pray for my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my mom, that you will give them the joy of knowing. That their sister has passed from this life but has entered in to heaven and Lord that she is rejoicing with a new song and that she is with you and Lord let that comfort be their strength at this time in Jesus mighty name I ask it hallelujah this morning, about five o'clock, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about this word. And he said, give the people time. Just begin to worship me and give the people time just to lay hold of that word that I have given to them and to receive the power of that word and to touch Jesus. That you'll be strengthened and you will be empowered 
Do you know, I can imagine, it doesn't tell us, but I can imagine that this woman had a new song. She had a testimony. Because she had heard about Jesus, she was going to go and tell others what Jesus had done for her. And that's the flowing. When that word begins to work in us, we will want to be just like a, a vessel that God can move through to reach others. So let us just take a few minutes to worship, to thank him, to lay hold, to touch him by faith. God has given you a promise and the enemy has tried to talk you out of it. But if you will lay hold of that promise and you'll not be turned to the left or the right, that word will not return unto God void. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I just put in another? Yes. This morning before I came out, I've been listening to all of the healing. Can you come up, dear? Um, this morning... Um, I didn't get time this week this thing, so I had to listen to uh, Audrey sent me the link to do with a man preaching about preaching and I went to listen to the first one this morning and it was all about healing and, uh, and but listening to the word and to, to you to you to take hold of the word it's very important to take hold of the word that that is your, that is your, your your healing your faith is lifted by the word uh, and uh, it wasn't. It didn't mention, but the woman, you know, that you were, you know, that touched the hem of the garment, and other other verses of scripture. That I'm sure you you already know that already anyway. But um, it's just that it's just more or less whenever this is all going on this morning. I just want to, to give you the, the Lord knows everything, and He knows everybody, what anything. And I myself now I must admit now I have been struggling with this myself, and I just know that God's in control. And that I'm going to get this healing sorted out. And it's going to be. I'm going to get it. I'm going to claim it, um, because I have been having problems for a wee while, and I just have been trying to fight and battle on, um, to work on that there. But I'm just. I just know that I'm going to get healed. I'm going to get healed, and I know. But what I've listened to this morning, and what I've heard in here, I know. I just know that God's going to heal me. Just know it, and um, just encourage us all that He 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 is a healer. Jesus is healer. He is the healer. He just, he's, he's been the healer. He always will be the healer. He is the healer. That's it. Full stop. And um, I'm just, it's just really encouraging me this morning because I was listening to that there and trying to get a grasp of that myself at home, listening to it before I come in here and then listening to it again here. So um, it's good. God's good. And God, you're just going to heal everybody. You're just going to be healed and that's it. All right. Just another word of encouragement. Um, a neighbour of ours had was uh, sharing that she was having tightness in her chest. So um, David and I went into her, um, went into her and brought the word, and we shared the word. We re we spoke to her. She's from more a religious background, but we shared the word with her and we confessed the scriptures with her, and then the Holy Spirit. As we were sitting talking to her, those testimonies, testimonies are so, so needed, even if they're small, but the Holy Spirit, as David was bringing forth the testimonies, he had heard and I started to bring them forth. She was sitting there and she says, that tightness is left. So before we even prayed, the word of God mm -hmm. and the testimony was set, set her free. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we prayed. We didn't lay hands on her and we prayed and we prayed that God would be in the house with her, that she would feel his presence. And the next day she says, I slept, well they wouldn't know better, he was talking to her, but I slept right through the six o'clock. It was the spirit of fear trying to come on her. And she slept six o'clock, she was joyful, she was rejoicing, she could feel something, you know, God's presence tingling or whatever way she was putting it. So just encourages, keep sharing your testimony with God and the word of God because it has the power so mm -hmm. praise God Amen. Thank mm -hmm. 
very throne of God. Do you know that we have a battle cry? Yes, amen. And that, that woman, as she was pressing in, it says she was say and say and say. I can touch the hem of his garment. I Jesus. know I will be healed. Why could she say that? Because she believed. She believed the word that she heard. And as we praise him for healing us, we're not waiting to see if he's going to heal us. We receive it by faith. And we thank him and we praise him. And we, I say to you today, what the Lord said to me whenever I received that diagnosis of Crohn's disease. And I heard the Spirit say, get your testimony ready. Prepare it now. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say that to you by faith today. Get your testimony ready. Be ready to praise the Lord and to give him glory because he's not going to heal you. By his stripes, you are already healed. So let that shout of praise, let that battle cry be heard in Jesus' name.
are the mighty God. We are victorious. You are the mighty healer. You are the mighty deliverer. The word of God says that he has put a new song in my heart. A hymn of praise unto his name. Many shall see it and fear and put their trust in the Lord. There's nothing greater than that personal touch of the master's hand. There's nothing greater than to receive that healing power of God, that saving, keeping, cleansing power of God. And to be a testimony of his power. Thank you, Lord. To be able to say, I am healed. I am healed. He is Jesus my healer. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to sing those words. There's a new song in my heart. Praise. It's a song of praise. It's a song of joy. It's the song of the redeemed. What a joy it is to know that our sins are forgiven. And that the bread of heaven is healing to us. That word of God is healing to all our flesh. It's not a spiritual healing. It's physical healing. It's mental healing. Jesus. It's freedom. Thank you, Jesus. And there may be something in your body that is lingering. There may be something that's been there for a long time. But you can say today, Lord, today I receive Jesus. the victory. Yes, I receive. I have a, I'm leaving Thank this house Jesus. today with a new song. Hallelujah. I know who I am. Thank you, Jesus. I know who you are. Jesus. And by the revelation of the Holy Spirit in my heart, you are the King of Kings. Jesus, you are Lord. You're my healer. My deliverer, yes, you, you are Jesus. my prince of peace, Hallelujah. you are my comforter, yes, you amen. are wonderful, the God Thank of you miracles, Jesus. Thank you, you're all that I need, and you have prepared a place for me, and I rejoice, oh God, and I want to bring others, I want to bring others into your kingdom. I'm leaving this house. Are you ready to declare it and decree it? Yes, amen. I'm taking that word of God. I'm decreeing right now the word of God is working mightily in me. Yes, this word of God is working mightily in me. Do you know the Bible says that inflammation is from, is part of the curse of the law. And we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Do, that means that things like Inflammation cannot live in our bodies. Whatever it is that you require today in your physical body, Jesus. don't leave this house without touching that word and receiving that strength and that power and to leave this place knowing that word of God is working mightily in me and I'm never going to be the same again. I'm going to go from strength to strength. I'm going from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's put a new song in my heart, a song of praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory.
I thank you, Lord, you can create new body parts. You can make and restore what is being damaged. You can make new. You, oh God, I give you praise. Praise you, Lord. That there's nothing impossible to you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Jesus. Lamb of God who always causes us to triumph and to carry his sweet savor to every place. That's Jesus. who you are. Give glory to the Lamb of God. Lord. For you're not leaving this house weak. Lord. You're not leaving this house sick. You're not leaving the way you came, but you're leaving with the mighty power of that resurrection life. And it's working Jesus. in you and it's working yes. mightily in you. And I Amen. decree right now, you are healed. I'm healed. Hallelujah. I'm healed. We receive from your hand, oh God. We give you glory. We give you praise. You said after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power to be my witnesses. And I decree over this people today. We are a people with a testimony. We, have a, we are a people with a witness, a living witness. For the glory of our God. When men are falling in fear and despair, we are rising up with the hope of glory. We've got the gospel Jesus. of the kingdom. And we're decreeing we are the ambassadors of Christ. We are in this world, but we are not of it. Hallelujah. 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 Do you receive it? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Oh, hallelujah. I was weak. But he is strong. 
Thank you, Lord. Your Thank grace you, is more than enough for oh God. Your grace Hallelujah. is sufficient for me. In my weakness, Hallelujah, your Jesus. strength is made perfect. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. He has Jesus. set my spirit free. He has set my spirit free. And I'm not Thank ashamed, you, oh God. I'm not oh, ashamed to praise you. Like David. Like David, he said, I'll be more undignified than this. Because the Lord, my God, lives. Hallelujah. And he rejoiced because the presence of God, the ark of the covenant, come by. Oh, but that word is nigh us. Thank you. In our minds. And in our hearts, the power of God lives in us, his people. Oh, we cannot take it in, oh God. Jesus. We cannot take it in, but we receive it. We receive it. Yes, amen. With joy I receive Hallelujah. it. With joy I dwell. Hallelujah. Draw water Jesus. from that well of salvation. For where the spirit flows, where that Thank river Lord. flows, Thank everything lives. Everything lives. There's healing yes. in the fountain. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we're thanking you for what you've done in our hearts, our hearts are lifted up and we stand in the gap Jesus. for our loved ones. We stand in the gap for those that have not heard the word. And Lord, we pray, take the skills from off their eyes. Jesus. Take the feel from off their eyes. And send your word. Send laborers, send that message, send that testimony of your glory Jesus. unto them. And we call them out of darkness, for you are able to lift them out of the pit of despair. Jesus. You are able to wash them clean. You are able to set them free. Hallelujah, what you've Hallelujah. done for us, you can do for them. And we yes. claim that household yes. salvation. We yes, claim Lord. it. Yes, in your and we name, receive it. For you are the God of wonders. You are the God of miracles. Yes, Lord. Oh, I give you praise. Wonderful Savior. I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank Jesus, you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Nothing thank is you, Lord. impossible. Thank you, Father. Nothing. Your arm is thank not you, too Father. short that you cannot thank see. You, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's a scripture in Isaiah, and it says that the ears that have been deaf will hear. The eyes that have not seen will see. And I will bring them from the east and the west, the north and the south. Our God is mighty. Yes. He is mighty to see it. The enemy would say, give up. Give up. But God would say, hold on. Hold fast. Jesus. Hold fast to that word of faith. Jesus. Hold fast to that living word of God. For he will not fail you. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kira da sundria santa. Kien da da ishilia sundria. Thank you, Jesus. We wait on you, oh God, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. We wait upon you, God. We are willing and obedient. And we desire to hear. Hear your word. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of when Jesus was there and it says the power of God was there to heal but he could do no mighty work because of their unbelief because they looked at him and said what good thing could come out of that, that was it Nazareth or wherever it was they were looking at a man and they couldn't see but faith doesn't look at a man faith looks at the living word that brought all of creation into being it says by him all things were created and that's what we're looking at. That's what our eyes are fixed upon today. How sad it was for those to see him and be in his presence and not receive. I've made up my mind. I'm not going to miss it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Thank you, Lord. You are my refuge. Thank you, Lord. You are my fortress. Thank you, Jesus. In you I put my trust. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory. The Lamb of God. Fountain of life. Glory to you, Jesus. From your very throne, God. Healing is mine. Joy is mine, Lord of God. The kingdom of God. It's not food or drink, but righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your righteousness, your peace, and your joy living in us. Thank you. 